What are the most American things you can think of? Maybe it's hunting down birds with a light machine gun with zero intention of aiming, or watching two bulls f and seeing a priest so repulsed by it, he drives a tractor into some nearby explosives. Maybe it's baseball. Ass feedings? How about joining a cult? Judge me. Judge us. The things that we've done. Sadly, it's not a sex call. I think that's a German thing. With Far Cry 6 set to release just around the corner and an extremely close four months, I've been on a little bit of a Far Cry kick, playing them all backwards for some reason. And I've come to realize they all have a decent amount of similarities, like shitty driving, horrible protagonists, amazing antagonists, and some of the most beautiful areas explored in video games, with every single one of them taking place in an exotic location with the exception of Far Cry 5. But its setting is not the only unusual thing about it. Far Cry 5 is pretty atypical in a number of ways. You have the story where you don't really see too many games brave enough to tackle the concepts of a cult and have it at the forefront of your game's subject matter. Then you have the game's approach where previous entries were pretty linear in its narrative. Far Cry 5 opens the entire map from the very start, allowing you to wreak havoc in any of the three regions that the game's map is broken down into with a combination of outpost clearing, side missions, main missions, optional activities like destroying the cult silos or freeing civilians, all contributing to progressing that region's narrative, culminating with the confrontation of that region's sovereign or sibling, since you are taking down a family of cultists. And once you take care of the three apostles or siblings, the game ends with you coming face to face with the leader, Joseph Seed himself. And then you have character customization, which is the first game allowing you to pick between a male or a female protagonist. You also don't have a voice, so I, I don't really get the idea behind this blank canvas. Now honestly, if you ever played a Far Cry game or even played 5, I'm pretty confident you'd agree and say gunplay is extremely addicting. I mean sure, clearing out outposts non-stop can get incredibly repetitive, as all things do when you start doing it more than 3 times, but the amount of weapons and explosives at your disposal, along with the freedom to clear out the cultists however you see fit, it can be a while before you start getting completely bored. From long range suppressed snipers, getting close and personal with tossing baseball bats at enemy faces, or using a compound bow or a suppressed gun for a silent approach, or just saying fuck it and running in guns blazing with C4, flamethrower, an RPG, or an LMG, or you can even go retro with an MP40 and a stick of dynamite, and the ensuing mayhem from your indiscriminate killing is something that never really gets old. So I don't really want to focus on gameplay, but rather the story and the seed family. Two years ago when I first experienced this game, there was something about it that left me wanting more and I can never quite put my finger on it. Sure, Joseph Seed is as charismatic as EDP is alarming to be around if you're under the age of 17. And Joseph Seed does undoubtedly steal every single scene he's in, just like all Far Cry antagonists do, with a stellar performance, and truthfully deserves a little bit more on-screen time, as the rest of the family does. And maybe that was part of the problem I was experiencing. You don't get to see much of the family. Only once you start hitting certain milestones and cause enough havoc in their region, are you then caught by the elite of their region and then taken to see them. Or occasionally do you hear them over radio chat, after also hitting certain milestones. And Joseph himself is only in a handful of scenes. Maybe I was at fault in expecting to see and hear more of the members throughout my journey of liberating Hope County. It could have also been possible that I expected a much more sensational version of Project at Eden's Gate, as seemingly many others have. Having no real idea what the hell a cult is, maybe deep down I was expecting to see massive orgies and weird human sacrifices and all kinds of other crazy shit. I mean, you're breaking new ground by experimenting with the concept of a doomsday cult. Why not go to the extreme, you know? But but sadly, we didn't get any of that. Far Cry 5 isn't an unapologetic game with a historical voice to share. Well, you can claim Ubisoft made some similarities with Joseph Seed's appearance to another real-life cult leader and with a cult symbol seemingly being a mix of iconography from Christianity and Scientology, ultimately it doesn't have anything to say. Ubisoft wasn't trying to provoke player consciousness, especially not to the depth of a Mafia 3, where in that game, you witness racial tension in the United States and discrimination against minorities that they had endured during the 1960s, especially in the city of New Bordeaux, which is the virtual version in New Orleans. And whether Ubisoft chose to bite their tongue and not share any opinions on this topic was smart or lazy, I think is really up to the individual person. I know people that love this story. For some, it was a miss for the same reasons of expecting a more important dialogue from Ubisoft. 
So, if Ubisoft wasn't trying to tie in real events, historical or contemporary, to make you think more critically, what was their goal? Well, their goal was a perspective that was subtle, and not exactly what we expected. Ubisoft's goal was to weave a story not entirely on the cult, and how good or bad they are, or having a leader that was batshit crazy for the sake of being insane. Again, no blood rituals, no goat dances around a bonfire to trips to see slave owners for a solid gold Ferrari right next to the sun rising again the next day, but instead their goal is to weave a nuanced story around a charismatic leader who is charming yet unsettling. A leader who will do anything to save as many people from the huge collapse God has told him is coming through his visions and has gained so much power in the countryside that even the authorities are afraid to intervene. A leader who has blind, unshakable faith. Faith that at times betrays a sense of delusion, and a true talent in manipulation that makes the introduction of the cult willing to sacrifice themselves for the father to stay at their side truly terrifying. And meanwhile, other signs make you wonder whether if he really is under divine favor. You're put into a position of manning a blank slate of a character to see, hear, witness all the reasons the cult needs to be taken down. But then you begin to wonder yourself whether if this is the right choice or not, with the sheriff expressing apprehension moments before you go to arrest Joseph in the introduction, to the plane crashing and dispatch addressing Joseph as father. by every single death of a family member and the culmination of the nuclear fallout, you're taken on a journey riddled with uncertainty. You have the unshakable conviction that the cult is evil and needs to be stopped. They're nothing more than Joseph's fanatics after all. But kill a sibling, free that region of the cult's oppression, and they'll tell you he's not crazy. You're just feeding into their beliefs. You're doing everything he said you'd do and you don't even realize it. You are the catalyst to the doomsday he's warned about. And the death scene of Faith pretty much tells you how the game's gonna end. It was always gonna happen this way. You'll walk the path. <laughs> You'll rescue your sheriff. You'll be... the hero. And then... you'll choose. And if you don't listen to him, Resist and somehow initiate the nuclear fallout or walk away and be forgiven by the father for all you've done to the cult. And while I think this is only justified by following up this bad ending with a worse spin-off, minus the ending altogether, the rest of the game is all about mind games. Is Joseph a powerful maniac hiding behind religion to do what he wants in Hope County or is he divinely chosen, completely disregarding, kidnapping, killing, and torturing those who are faithless in order to save the faithful? Why not the greatest story of the Far Cry games, the Seed Family and Project Aiden's Gate will be a memorable cast that hopefully moving into Far Cry 6, Ubisoft has learned not to be so damn subtle. Honestly, I still think they kind of missed the mark, although after setting expectations and realizing they were trying to go for a little bit more of a nuanced story without saying the cult is completely good or bad and instilling this feeling of being in a remote countryside that is ultimately dominated by a militarized doomsday cult also gives a feeling of uncertainty and hopelessness, but I just wanted to revisit this game. I remember a lot of people kind of just shitting on it for not being ballsy enough to make a statement. 
but it's not horrible. I would still recommend giving this game a shot. It's always on sale. Montana's beautiful and you can light cultists on fire. Anyways, if you played Far Cry 5, let's talk about it down below. What are your thoughts and opinions on it? Weakest aspect? They revisited the idea of a cult. What would you want them to do different in the future? Let's talk down below. If you haven't joined the Discord yet as well, it's a nice wholesome place where we get to chat, talk up, meet some really nice lifelong friends. I fucking hate that place.